Hello, today we are going to derive the kinetic gas equation which is PV is equal to 1 over 3 mnv square where P is pressure, V is volume, M is mass of the molecule, N is number of the molecules and V square or V is the velocity. We know that gases are composed of large number of small particles known as molecules and these molecules are continuously in random motion. Each molecule carries certain amount of momentum and kinetic energy and when they strike the walls of the container, they exert pressure on the walls. So the kinetic gas equation relates the relationship between pressure, volume, mass of the molecule, number of molecules and their velocities. Now let's derive the kinetic gas equation. For deriving the kinetic gas equation, you need to know the equation of momentum which is P is equal to mv, Newton's law which is F is equal to ma and equation of velocity which is equal to S divided by T. Now let's consider this cube and inside this cube there is a particle that particle can move in any direction and the velocity of this particle in three dimensional space will be v is equal to vx plus vy plus vz. The velocity in the x direction, the velocity in the y direction and the velocity in the z direction. This makes the problem more complicated. So let's make it more simple and jump into only two dimension. Now let's consider this is the left side of the container and this is the right side of the container and the axis is only x axis. We represent this side by B and this side by A. Now when the molecules have certain velocity then the molecules have certain momentum which is denoted by momentum is equal to mvx. The velocity in the y and the z direction here are taken as zero and the total velocity of the molecule is equal to the velocity in the x dimensions only. So the momentum of the particle is equal to mvx. Now this is the momentum of the particle before the collision. When the particle collide with side A, it will reflect back. This is considered as elastic collision and there is no loss of energy. So when the molecule reflect back, it will have the same momentum is equal to mvx but with a different direction. So the momentum after the collision is denoted by minus mvx. Now the change in the momentum is the momentum before the collision minus momentum after the collision. Before the collision the momentum is mvx and after the collision is minus mvx. So the change in the momentum we have negative sign inside here and negative sign here when these signs multiply they will become plus and we will have mvx plus mvx which is equal to 2 mvx. This is momentum of the particle after the collision. Now we need to determine the time and how much time it takes to collide from one wall to another wall. For doing this let's consider when the molecule strike this wall then for striking this wall again it will first go toward point B and then it will come back to phase 1. So the total length it will travel will be equal to L plus L which is equal to 2L. And the velocity of the molecule we know is Vx. We know now that velocity is equal to distance divided by time. During cross multiplication we will have time t is equal to s divided by velocity where s is displacement which is equal to 2L the time it will travel for the second collision and Vx is the velocity of the molecule. So we have time t is equal to 2L divided by Vx. Now remember these two values the value for time is equal to 2L divided by Vx and momentum del p change in momentum is equal to 2mvx. Now from Newton's second law we know force is equal to mass times acceleration and acceleration is equal to V divided by T. So we will have MV divided by T and MV here again is momentum. Uh, this is known as impulse or change in momentum divided by time also known as impulse. So we have force is equal to del P divided by T and del P is the momentum which we have calculated is 2mvx 
where m is mass of this particle and vx velocity of this particle and the time uh, the time of impulse we have calculated is 2l divided by vx so we have this new equation after substituting the values we have value for change in momentum 2mvx divided by time 2l divided by vx this vx will shift to the upside and this will become 2mvx square divided by 2l velocity in the x direction and l is length of this container along the x axis now let's calculate pressure we know pressure is equal to force per unit area and we have calculated the value of force is equal to mvx square divided by l this is the value of force substituting this value in this equation we will have pressure is equal to mvx square divided by l and area is length multiplied by length or we can say length multiplied by width now the velocity of the particle is in the x direction and the plane on which it is going to exert pressure will not be x, x, y or x, z plane because the velocity is in the x direction it will be perpendicular to the plane. For example this is the plane where the pressure will be exerted uh, and the molecule is traveling in this direction. For example this is x direction then this plane will be in the y and z direction or the y and z dimension so we take this area in the y and z dimension and consider this as a y and this one as z while the velocity here this length was in the x dimension so we consider this length in the x dimension after substituting the value for force and area area is this y multiplied by z and the equation of force which we have derived is 2 mvx square divided by 2 l and this length is along the x dimension this length will come to the denominator and in the denominator we will have length multiplied by width multiplied by height for example this is x this is y and this is uh, z then we will have x multiplied by y multiplied by z is equal to volume so the pressure p will be equal to mvx square divided by v this pressure value is for a single particle now we generalize this equation to the rest of the particle in the container so if we have n number of particle then we can write this equation as pv is equal to m into n vx square where n represent the number of particle and we multiplied volume on both the sides so we have pressure time volume is equal to m n vx square where m is the mass of the particle so for n number of particle we have n vx square now here is the tricky part we take into account the root mean square velocity which is v square is equal to vx square plus vy square plus vz square for this particle if this particle is traveling in all the three dimensions with equal velocities then we can take vx square is equal to vy square is equal to vz square so we can write this equation as v square the root mean square velocity is equal to vx square plus vx square plus vx square and if we add all of these terms then this will become 3 vx square and now solving this equation for the value of vx square we will get vx square is equal to v square divided by 3 now substituting this value for vx square in this equation we will have the kinetic gas equation pv is equal to 1 over 3 m n into v square and this v square is the root mean square velocity root mean square velocity of gas molecules so this is the kinetic gas equation and this equation relates the pressure volume mass number of particle 
and root mean square velocity of the gas if we know these these are microscopic properties if we know these values then we can explain the pressure which is the macroscopic property of the gas and volume of the gas that's it thank you for watching and do not forget to subscribe easy video for more videos